Fighters and Team Liquid as we're on the verge of finding out who's going to be able to take that top spot, that top prize, $300,000, and get the guaranteed spot, Rear Masters. And the Fog, looking through these drafts so far, from what we've Ooh. seen so far today, anything sort of jumping out of you, out of you sort, of, sort of an incredibly strong pick. You know, who are you going to have your eyes on this game as well in terms of like individual performances that we've had popping off so far in this best of five? I think it's speed versus greed a lot, right? I think... I think Liquid has a draft that can absolutely set some ridiculous tempo, getting early auras, getting early momentum around a Bristol SF to get early Roshan and pump themselves up with this Coddle. However, looking at gaming, if they can stall back, sit back, use what, do what Ace did in the last game, get that crazy amount of farm, get farm for Duracho as well too, perhaps they're going to be able to do it. I'm liking Liquid's approach right now, but Ace has been an absolute menace on this Doom. Oh, can he withstand the Underlord, who's 3-0 in these finals? We're going to see Liquid, they're going to run head first into this fight. They're going to try and focus down Celery, they'll get him. First blood for Nisha. And now we see an immediate display of the new change, of course, for Keeper of the Light. Blinding Light is a spell now that you get given without having to be in your form. And it's powerful. He immediately set that up there beautifully for his team. And yeah, we'll see if the, well, also you have to see all these little changes that happen for these heroes too. SF, of course, the raise is no longer slow turn rate. However, now you get more presence of the Dark Lord during team fights when the team fight lasts longer. You get more minus armor and stuff like that. Which, honestly, that can be pretty crazy with something like Bristleback. I'm looking forward to see how that even is going to function altogether. But yeah, I, I like Liquid's approach right now. Nisha getting some heavy harassment in here with the first round of raises. This is a potent hero when you have something like Coddle behind you, too. This Coddle actually works super well with two of their cores. Shadow Fiend and Bristle both getting pumped up massively. But yeah, gaming, if the greed can work, we've seen what they've been able to do with Ace. Absolutely, yeah. If Ace himself can sort of have a solid game, stay at the top, we've absolutely seen Ace sort of work gaming gladiators out of tough, tough, sort of, tough spots in the game where the other cores have fallen behind. If Ace can stay strong, he can absolutely push the game to a point where the rest are able to catch up. And, is, and maybe that'll just be the answer versus the constant movements. You know, Liquid, yep. they're going to be looking to move around the map, apply pressure constantly, and gaming is just going to look to farm, 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 and get that split up of the map too. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the two dynamics end up working versus each other. And yeah, let's see how the mid-matchup ends up going, because this in, in the past, of course, a very dominant team, well, not dominant, but it was still skill matchup, but more dominant than before. Now, I think Shadow Fiend has ways to play around a Templar Assassin. I mean, Nisha's been able to hold though, the wave in sort of a good position to, to really harass Quinn on the first few rounds. Yeah, first few waves, you can definitely... It gets worse and worse. Sure. For the SF. <laughs> heavy spam here from Tofu already on this top lane. They're blowing regen up here on the side of Liquid. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, blind, seeing blinding light, it, it's it's good damage. You don't have to like it's. You can't really dodge it. It's just gonna hit them every single time. So it's really cool to see the change, of course, for the hero. And of course, we'll have to see the other change too of, uh, for the bristleback. Right, this hero now, they don't really have the most like explosive type of damage. Like it's now more versus like the spend big hitters, where if you turn your back, you shoot them multiple quills. But you still are gonna shoot multiple quills anyway versus something like TA. So that at least will have that function. So we'll have to see how that all goes down. But I'm, most, I'm mostly going to be just looking at Zai, because the, sh the stuff that him and Boxy have been able to do in some of these games is just unreal. Win. Zai's nice, nice. dealing well with the raise. The raise is sort of being thrown out his way. 9-4 to four against 9-5, for, to five. keeping it even in the mid. Ooh. Getting very low, though. It's constant threats. He's sure with a couple more raises to play with, with the amount of mana that he does have, but Refraction's back up. We have more mangoes coming out for Nisha. No, it's just going to be Boots now. And Quinn, yeah, he's handling, he's handling it. This is super, f I mean, this is like such high skill Dota here between these two players in these matchups. Quinn, he's going to top himself up also, so Nisha is going to be a bit low for these next few moments in comparison to Quinn, who's going to be full HP. So far, nobody getting completely left out on the sidelines. Nope. Duracho a little bit slowed down, but... It'll be a bit expected, perhaps, in the first few waves for a Slark versus Hoodwink. Nisha got to be careful off the next few side blades. Yep. Sitting rather low in this matchup. Ooh. The Queen getting some good angles. He's trying to line him up every time, too. He's getting some nice denies here. Power Rune, are they going to look to check it? I see Tofu is running over toward the mid lane. 
So if they check the bottom rune as well, this could put Nisha in a position I'm where he has to back up and find a bounty rune, or maybe even just go back to base. Yeah, they're, they're double checking. He's going to try for the bottom one. Celery's here. He's yeah, not Nisha. able to go for it. He could be at risk of dying here if they want to commit for a kill, but also might just have to back up and find a bounty. Never. <laughs> so even in this mid lane. 17 10 to 18 8. I can't even look Ooh. elsewhere. Yeah, it's close. I'm not, nothing crazy happening so far in the side lanes, as I say, well, you know, both carries, both off laners, they're hitting the creeps. Yep, Duracho able to recover now, brings himself a salve, so he's starting to get all those last hits back online. Who got the two Lotuses? I saw Tofu had one, and Sai got the other, okay. So an equivalent exchange at the moment. And all in all, in, in terms of timings then, regarding Liquid's lineup, do you sort of see them try to go for a similar sort of progression as they do when Mikke was on the Sven? Yeah, I mean, exactly the same, actually, yep. I would say. Almost pretty much yeah, pretty much identical. It's going to be super fast movements, I'd imagine, from them. Because, yeah, they can clear Ancient Stacks super hard with this Bristleback. They can force Roshans and everything quite hard if they do get any type of advantage. And they're going to have auras. That's one thing. So I'm going to be looking to see what Ace decides to build this time. How greedy he ends up going. Because he does have to make space for this TA plus this, this Lark. Okay. Be able to chase uh -huh. Tofu down a bit. I'll we'll get held back by Ace, though. In fact, with the Scorch turn, Mikke's got to be a bit careful and falling low himself. He's got Vanguard. He's trying to toy with them there. Tofu? Oh, it might Mikke. have him. Oh, my They're God. They're really teasing one another here up top. Boxy, right, sees, get... Boxy sees low heroes. He's TPing up. He wants to try to punish this. No, Tofu's going to be able to salve up. Boxy's hunting him. Won't quite catch him. Power rune. They're double checking it again. Gaming. Very prepped around this mid lane. Really Looking are. to punish Nisha. They're going to get the setup. TP's coming in. But Quint, he's hit the six. He's got the slow. The blinding's there, but it doesn't matter. Nisha taken out by the final touch of Tofu. Nice move. The regen will get snatched away from Quint, but either way, a great hit there from Tofu. The two supports making it happen. Lanes are secured, and they're looking to make moves to make sure that TA has a good time. Really nicely done top. They can't even punish Ace. Even's continuing to use this tornado. They're closing in on the Vanguard. Be more difficult to, to sort of make these moves. They can maybe go for him down here. So if they've got enough damage to do this. Gotta be Pounce. close. Joshua trying to get in position to block off Sai's escape. Frostbite. They got him. him out. Okay, I mean, Gladiator's starting to get some kills in these side lanes. I mean, top lane, Mikke continues to try and get aggressive under the tower, but not really able to get the kills at this point on his own. Needs that extra rotation to come in if they want to try diving tier ones right now. And the fact that Boxy also... Let's see if he gets to catch him. Uh, the fact that Boxy makes the move top and doesn't end up finding anything also means he's not getting the stacks prepped. So what we've seen most of the time with Boxy is he's very aware of making moves, but also prepping stacks to make sure that his fan, his bristle, or one of those heroes are super pumped up. We do see some from Insania, but not on this side over here. And Seller, he actually walks in. He's able to snatch away the Wisdom Rune this time. Right, giving a bit of space as well for Drasher to start getting the solo XP. Yep. Try and get his Shadow Dance on as soon as he can. He's about a couple of creeps away. Yeah, they got both Wisdom Runes as well. And they want to try and make a go. They're Drachio, trying to he punish. still needs that final creep to get the level 6, so he can't get too aggressive, Duraccio. He's got to be careful. Bounces won't go back and forth between each other. They're trying to kill Zai again before he does finish the Vanguard. Getting some early pressure onto the Tier 1 mid now, Quint. Does Quinn have any stacks yet? Not quite yet, because of all the movements that they've been doing to set up for the runes. But yeah, they'll set him up for a shield rune now, and they're smoking. They're looking to punish bottom. They're deep on the side of Liquid. Duraccio. He's got six. He's hit the six. He's fine. And here comes Quinn with the rotation. Let's see if Zinebox here able to back out in time. A salary. He's ready to follow up here off Quinn's trap slow as they'll look towards Zai. Frostbite's there. Duraccio's back in. The bushwhack will hold back the two cores, but Celery's in with the body blocks. It's not enough, though. Zai, he's able to make his way around the Crystal Maiden. Another slow there from the trap. And he'll turn with his own pit to hold back Celery and Duraccio. Make sure the Slark can't get in on him, but he can't control Quinn. Great move from Quinn. Good rotations coming out from gaming in this early game. And Ace. Doing some efficiency farming, pulling the camp into the neutrals. Going to be able to get some solid farm here. He's also hit six. 
in the mid. Another one. An easy one for Quinn there. Oh, Quinn's mad. Set up by Tofu. He's having a hell of a start here. 2 0 1. Not a safe place to come right now, this mid lane. Quinn ready to dive this tier one tower against whoever turns up to try and pick up the XP on Liquid. I mean, we saw, I mean, Quinn was shut down so much in this last game, so I think this is the call that they've made is play around this TA a little bit more, make sure that Quinn has a good early game. Because he can be the one that's active a little bit more in this early game compared to the Slark. Rotation out, Insania. Can't really set up for something like Quinn without the rotation of Boxy. That's a lot of damage already being done to this tier one by the TA alone. Boxy's trying. There's the Fiend's Gate. Let's see if they can catch Quinn. They can't. Silence. Immediate ancient seal there from Tofu. Great play. His eyes out of there. And he's like, all right, there's no more play to be found here. Back to the back to the bottom lane, he goes. Need these supports just hand holding around Quinn. Duracho. A little bit careful under the tower there. Makes quite a beating. Power rune, five seconds. Supports now on Liquid. Helping out Nisha a little bit more. It's gonna spawn bottom. Foxy will claim it. Could be in trouble. And hold back Quinn. And he's got Insania by his side. Yeah. Liquid matching the numbers now The Gaming Gladiators bring to this area to make sure that no further kills are fed in this mid lane. As Ace continues to do so the efficiency farm, I love this. I mean, just pulling the creep wave into this camp. Mick is gonna try to contest it. He knows that Ace is just trying to be efficient. It's definitely gotta be a bit of a concern for Liquid. Mm -hmm. We've seen it before, if Ace gets the space to farm, he becomes an incredible beast on his doom. Oh, absolutely. And they're, they're bringing the action to this Underlord. Quite a lot here, his eye. Getting slowed down. Poxy doing a good job though, constantly sort of bailing out his teammates with these bushwhacks. He's having to literally just run between lane constantly, which means, yeah, he's not really getting the stacks ready. Now he's going to get one, but the other one is blocked. See Celery, he already got the Sentry Ward to block out the hard camp. Mickey doing efficient stacks himself up top in the north jungle. So, and, yeah. so he's got, I think he had what, it was like a, yeah, four stacks there from Insania, but he also was stacking some himself. And he finds a really nice neutral item, I would say, for the Bristle. The occult bracelet. We see the rights of the yellow shar, the mana regen. Got buffed. Gives magic resist. Oh, it's already rather tough to make a move on to Mikke. Yep. I mean, we're not really seeing gaming gladiators put any effort in towards this top lane. They're just leaving Ace on his island, allowing him to have the space to farm against Mikke. They're playing around mid and bottom consistently. Nice time they've got the auto salary. Zai, he'll respond with an instant TP out, but the Frostbite is back up. Great moves. Over and over again. And they almost even take out the mid tower with all these type of moves too. Tofu. It's kind of taunting him. Another power rune. It's going to spawn top. Tofu, he's speedy. He's going to be able to just kill it. He actually doesn't. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was, yeah, <laughs> I was like, what the? He <laughs> left it there for Nisha to grab. <laughs> but he'll take it out. In terms of timings, eight. He's got the Midas stun. So the gold is gonna start rolling in for the Doom. The greed is paying off for sure right now in this early game. Duraccio, he's got Tread's Echo Saber as well. TA set up for success, level 10. I mean, very good for gaming at the moment. I mean, absolutely right. You said Liquid wanted to, to be being able to sort of replicate what they were able to do around the, the, the span of Mickey. It's not happening so far. No. 12 minutes in, they've only got that one kill. And indeed, Gaming Gladiators keeping on par with Liquid's potential of, of, of maybe being able to be aggressive early game, but it just hasn't happened so far for Liquid. No, it's Liqu a slow start. Liquid definitely be, want to be the tempo setters, and so far in the first 12 minutes, it's actually all been gaming. The rotations around mid, the constant double moves from the supports, it's, it's, it's really working. And again now, when they invade the triangle there, they make sure they take away the sentry that had dewarded, and then they actually block the ancient. So now it's only a double stack that's going to be there ready for Bristle. They're doing all the right moves. This is clean Dota from gaming. Yeah, Liquid, they, they feel it. They're, they're going to try and find something. And with the three of them. They got to push Ace out of this lane. I mean, he's just free farming with a Midas. Mickey playing aggressive. It, it's difficult to, to try and take down Ace under this tower. They've got the four heroes here. Backup likely to come in. Here's the Fiend's Gate. They're trying to numbers. get him behind him. But Ace, he's able to get himself out to the side. And Quinn, and Tofu, Celery, they're all here. They're ready to turn. They'll the turn damage. towards Mikke. They burst through the bristle. As Mikke's gone and Liquid, they have to bail out now. As Zai, he's put to a stop. The Frostbite's there. Liquid, they just forced it a bit too up beyond the tower. Boxy trying to go for Ace, but he misses the bush rat. Whack, the, and Ace is fine. And Boxy here, I mean, the Wisdom Rune's about to spawn. They're, they know he's going to chill around here. I mean, Celery, he's got stick they charges. Got he's perfectly fine. 
not even able to get a single spell out to, to connect onto the Crystal Maiden at least. Gets the bushwhack onto and, Tofu. And look but at it Duracho. doesn't matter. They lose three heroes. And Duracho runs in and claims the other Wisdom Rune as well. I mean, gaming, they, it, the, they are looking amazing in this game. They certainly are. Liquid just not able to sort of get anything going in this early game. And Ace, I, he already has Boots of Travel finished yep. up potentially. So he's going to be able to match the movement around the map versus this Underlord already as he has been. Zai, zero and four. First pick Underlord, they seem to have an answer, and right now it's looking very good for them. Absolutely, you know, this, this uh, Underlord, they've been able to play around it perfectly in previous games, but this one, it's it's not falling into place. Nope. And quick, I mean, Duracho, he is getting closer and closer to Defusal, and they're just finding kill after kill after kill. It's nine to one. Mickey and the Shadow Phoenicia still farming, but starting to feel some very good timings coming out for gaming. And the thing about Mickey is, he may be able to find this Ags at a good timing, but the one thing I always like to mention is, especially when you're playing versus something like TA, is your armor is still a bit low. I so mean, yeah, we saw how burst. quickly they killed him. Yeah. You know, Mikke, I think, definitely felt that he was going to be a lot stronger than he actually was there. Yep. Charging in, uh, one sort of disable, and indeed into sort of the physical burst of Quinn, Mikke didn't stand a chance in the front lines of the fight. And Quinn here, he has Max Meld, and he's about to have Desolator finish too. He is going to hit real hard, and he has a DD the rune bottle, for the yeah. next move. You do not want to turn up to a fight right now if you're Liquid. This is problematic Even though for that's sure for them. kind of what you want to be doing with your lineup. They're going to try. They got to keep trying to go for something here. The two supports are a bit separated from the rest of the stack, so opportunities here for Liquid. I mean, Tofu, he's actually going for the TP out. It's going to work. Tofu's away. They'll settle for Celery. It's something. Not quite enough, though. They wanted to ideally get both of these as Mickey. He goes bottom, and now it's also... <laughs> so they're going to have Desto, right? With that massive minus armor, and then they also have the Fusel already done for the Slark. These items are fantastic when you play versus yeah, I mean, Dur yeah, Duracho's ready to punch some of these cores. Whether it be Mickey or, or, or Zai, he's ready to trade with them. How can they stabilize the game? They got to start getting some farm going. They got to start outnumbering somehow, but I mean, look at Duracho. Playing super aggressive, they're trying not, to steal the farm. Not a lot that he's scared of right now. You sure? Trying to go for this, but Shadow Dance is there. Pounce is going to be back up in a few seconds. There's no chasing the Slark. Yeah, they're playing this absolutely beautifully. Level 13 on the TA. Desto's done. Is it time for Roshan? It might just be. And why not? He's so far ahead. Yeah, Didi and Desto. A couple of stacks here with the meld as they set things up. Here, Quint. Double meld. It's still so damn fast. And not a chance here, Roshan. Not a chance at all, and, and Liquid, Ooh. no signs of heading over. They do get Duraccio, at the least there for the side of Liquid, but Liquid's, right. Liquid's Draft is actually the one that really wants, even though they're playing versus TA, they're the ones that would have wanted to be dictating the pace and getting that early Roshan for the Bristle to kind of steamroll things. I mean, Quinn able to get it this early, it's, it's going to cause problems for Liquid. Yeah, def definitely a bit of a slip up there that yep. Duraccio goes down. Yeah, he stepped up a bit too far. Starting to get a little bit of momentum here for Liquid. They're enabling Nisha nicely. The thing is, all in all, Nisha's still farming very well, even true. though Zai is behind. That is true. And I guess Nisha is kind of the true carry of this game in terms of right click that is for, true. for Liquid. That is very, very true. If he can get his items and they can keep him alive, it doesn't really matter sort of if Mikke goes in first and ends up dying. Oh. If the Shadow Fiend can survive, stand his ground, and dish out the physical damage. Something else that's also pretty interesting is uh, an item that disappeared for a long time but is now back the neutral item is the vampire fangs on bristleback it's a lot of life still right between it's a really good one on bristle standard life still the spell life still i remember how much we people were complaining about this item on bristle for some time okay we'll see how much, uh, much much of a difference it makes for mickey in terms of his survivability in the fights yep i'm saying that though he does fight oh no 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 that was the tier two right yes yeah, yeah that's he's the back for the rest of the teams yeah he's farming some stacks he's still i mean he's also going to start ramping up and catching up versus the ta Tania. He's got backup. Ace, can you get away? Immediate TP out. They're fiend skating in, but they won't be able to catch him in time. He was quick. Gaming's still very happy with everything that's going on here. They're getting away with their farm. Okay. He'll be just fine. They're definitely a bit tougher to take down now. We'll be going for the BKB next, Mickey. Okay. okay. As you said, um, he's not really the real carry. It's going to be Nisha building up for the Silver Edge and stuff like that. And Sanya just deleted. Quinn having a spectacular start here. 4 0 and 2. That's They're enabling him. On. Oh. Well, that, that is one of those things, right? If you. Sometimes you see it right when you're stunned in base and such. Yeah. You TP out. 
because the TP animation, it will be done, but there's still sort of that moment where you're still there, but you're not there. And uh, indeed, unfortunate for uh, for Slark, for, for Duracho, that uh, that pounce didn't come in a moment sooner. And uh, very fortunate for Nisha, he gets away. Nisha now has Shadow Blade, Hastern in the bottle. Quinn steps up pretty far here. I mean, he's got the Aegis. But they're all on top there of him. There is a lot of heroes here. I mean, I don't know if Quinn's able to get out a second time. Uh, Nisha's gonna rev up the Requiem. They're ready to blow him up. As uh -oh. Quinn straight back in, immediately back out. Oh, that's a big deal. That death really hurts. They're chasing for more as well. Still a haste rune. Is it gonna catch another? Doesn't look like it. Uh, I mean, what was going on there? So, you, just sort of a just bit of a lapse of judgment. Didn't expect Liquid to be able to turn up in the numbers that they did. Yeah, I mean, just way too far up this time uh, around. A painful death. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Yeah, I think he also got pushed back as well a little bit too. I think Insania may be pushing him a little bit out of position with the blinding light. Sure, I mean, there's still sort of mistakes from both cores. You know, they got the Roshan uh, before it, Duraccio going down bottom, and then afterwards up top, losing the Aegis, going down a second time there, Quinn. Quinn doesn't want to hurt his timings too much, Celery. Trying to set up for a play up top here, but Boxy is able to just waltz away. Celery's still persisting. He's got a wand. And they've got the trap slot. He doesn't have any help, though. I mean, Celery, can he actually finish his eyes here to bail him He's out? He's him with the heels. Catches him with the pit. Whoops. Now Boxy, though. Gets baited to try to go for the kill. I right, was both supports there. Showing up with the backup of their offlaners. And uh, in a trade that Gaming Gladiators will come out on top. <laughs> he celery him. with the tip. <laughs> a classic Celery. Usually he tips the other person, Ooh, though. Nisha. Nisha. Sentry down. Dracia knows something's up. And even so, Nisha still has the Requiem on cooldown 20 seconds. So no chance of a, a Shadow Blade combo as of yet. It's Tormentor time. Wisdom Rune is also spawned right there. We're going to start it up. These quills. For Liquid, their group up is still going to be very strong. Especially when they're rallied around the Underlord, even though they are a bit behind. See if Zai does like to just going for more and more of these orders. At the moment, I'm seeing a ton of four staffs being queued up, so wanting to counteract the Slark in particular. What's going on with Celery there? <laughs> Some sort of funky animation. <laughs> He's just getting the X's, right? Yeah. The Rachio. You can't, you, do, you can't do this by yourself. <laughs> not, not even with the, the sort of good farm that he has. No, he needs his buddies. Not going to be able to solo that. He'll need Quinn. That is early. Okay. Uh, 21 minutes in, Nisha picking it up for the team. I mean, the TA trap's probably bugging them a little bit here. True. And then he can potentially also set up for those Requiem plays without having to be scared of, like, being under vision. That actually could be some cool potential for it here. Nice, he's getting his timings, though. Blink Dagger's online. Okay. So if he's able to sort of catch vision of Nisha, he can be straight in on top of him in the team fights. We've yet to see a Doom. And he's just been playing literally all out farming. Nice, it's worked out many times before for him. Sure has. And he's got Doom and he's got the Tornado Creep. My favorite actual combo now by far over the Centaur Creep. He's able to pull people right back into the fray. They're looking to catch something here. Aether Lens also on Tofu for the catch. Insania wouldn't be the biggest of grabs. Oh, they want to find some core. I, but I, Mick is not the easiest kill either. They have to get the Doom. They have to get every single thing connected on him perfectly. Radiant are scanning. Now Liquid, I'm able to avoid this one. Gaming Gladiators not to find the target here with this first smoke attempt with the the reveal of Ace's Blink. Liquid's done a good job of stagnating the growth, right? Things were starting to perpetually grow there for gaming for some time. Liquid now splitting up the map, getting all their farm here for everybody. Even Insania, he's getting quite a bit of farm too. And he ha does have the recall ability. So now they're going to have multiple forms of being able to move around the map, right? Fiend's Gate plus recall. They can bring a lot of numbers to try to potentially maybe match this Doom that maybe will eventually go boots to travel to. Oh, thanks, Tofu. Thanks. Oh, there we go. Balance and all things for game five. <laughs> I needed that Aegis timer, too. Radiance top tower is under attack. 
Game State has calmed down for a moment. Yeah, both teams avoiding one another as they work towards their next items. BKB's next on the Dyer's shopping list for Quinn. And we're on the side of, top tower is under of Liquid. Attack. What are we getting next for Nisha? He wants to get the butterfly. Ooh, okay. I mean, playing versus the double physical damage cores. First, he's going to have Silver Edge. Duraccio. Be careful. I mean, they know to be cautious up here. It's been a while since they've seen Liquid on the map, and high, high chance that Liquid's setting up something. They'll go for the tower. Drops fast. Yeah, I mean, the uh, four staff prioritized on Zai this game with his build. Makes sense versus the Slark. I mean, just being able sure. to pull people away. It's like it's literally the best item versus these Slarks, even versus. I mean, it's it's probably one of the best items in Dota forever. So, but yeah, in particular versus Slark, and we're seeing Ace. He almost has his Octarine finish, as you know we've seen the disassemble Vanguard play. That's going to be the route he takes. Just trying to build up that net worth. And they're ready to go again in gaming, Gladiators. DD on Quinn. Can they catch Liquid by surprise? I mean, once again, Liquid doing a good job of splitting from them, Zai. They'll go for it. This damage is going to be insane from Quinn. In they go. A few hits from Quinn. They'll throw in a Mystic Flare for good measure. How long is the Roche going to be also? It was five seconds. So we're going to find out. One minute 30. Bit of a long spawn. Actually, I mean, right in the middle. And they do have Deep Vision also, too. They have this ward that's actually been placed around the triangle quite some time ago so to be able to watch Mickey. Now, Mickey, stepping up in the mid. I still have the Blink Doom ready from Mace. If they want to go, go, he's in. BKB gets off. It was off in time. And TPs are coming in. They won't continue to commit and onto the Bristol back under the tower with the BKB coming off. They have to be careful. Nisha's right here. He's sending up for a Requiem. Just waiting if they push forward just a bit too far. See if they can go again now with the BKB from Mikke wearing off. A couple of hits here, bringing Celery down low. He'll be forced back to safety. So I coming in through the Fiend's Gate. They'll close the gap on Celery. Another four staff. And the sharpshooter off the mark. So actually going to connect onto Ace, but doesn't hit onto Celery. Another four they, staff. They really want this Crystal Maiden. And they'll get him. The big hit's coming in from Nisha there. They're going to check the Roche. They might even... Can they find another kill even? Not quite. I mean, Roche, it's not spawning just yet. 30 it's seconds. It's close. 30 seconds. Very close, yeah. They should be able to hold this position long enough to, to be able to take it if they want to be patient. How many four staffs? Four four staffs on the side of Liquid. How many on the side of... How many on their side? Only two. Four staff gaming. Scan comes out from Radiant. Let's clip them up top for a second here. It's going to be back up in five. I should be primed to take this, as long as they've got Mickey and Nisha around. Hey, they're going to kill it so fast as well, too, with the goo and the presence. Did he just walk out? Did he just miss the spawn? No, he didn't. Okay. I was like, oh my lord. Quinn, going to solo the Tormentor in the meantime. Will be able to do so. Skywrath gets it, but Roche is going to drop very quick. And not really the build that you'd steal the time on Quint on a TA, uh, but uh, definitely one of the ways to deal with a Bristol. He yeah. wants to get his own Silver Edge. I don't blame him. Gaming still in a pretty comfortable position. Now going to have to play versus the Nages for some moments here, though. And the one thing is, Quinn, this is a very fragile build that he's gone for. If they do get on top of him, could be some scare here for Quinn. Yeah, I mean, as you say, well, in terms of sort of ways to bail him out, they... They have two forces. They've got the, yeah, a couple of forces, and of course he's got his own hurricane. So oh, yes. Still ways to break out of the, the combo if he does get caught in the root with the pit and such. And actually, like, looking at it, he, that, that'll disjoint from everything, even from the Hoodwing stun, right? They'll be able to just break him out of it. So, yeah, he should actually be able to... Should be able to reset pretty decently from that. Yeah, even with this strength, though, they may have hesitations on fighting into this Aegis. Yeah. Whilst Nisha has it. Could just get overwhelmed. Also, Mickey, he does have an Elven Tunic now, so does have a little bit of evasion to go through. Lots of Tier 3 tokens dropping in an instant. Foxy will claim the Wisdom Rune, 28 minutes. Same thing on the other side. They're actually giving... Uh, Duracho's actually the one taking it. He's just getting pumped okay. up. I, I mean, I don't mind that at all. Sure. I think the support's already, you know, they've kind of done their job. Now it's at the point of the course is to be able to carry everything here from Absolutely. the side of gaming. I mean, if either Duraccio or oh, bottom lane. Foxy. Should be alright, but yeah, if, if either sort of Duraccio or Quinn survives through these fights, both, both these heroes are ready to carry. Oh, they're actually TPing. They're actually Fiend's gaining down. 
Let's see if they can get anything from this. They're going to look towards Tofu. I mean, they're bringing, they're bringing numbers. They're going to go all in on the Scarf. Mickey charging towards Tofu. Tofu tries for the CP out, but the bash hits there. Quinn's able to get away, though. Like we're trying to ramp up the pressure here with this Aegis, this mobility. I believe it's, what, a Basher now also done? Yeah, Mickey just got it. Yeah. Mickey's got the Basher, and they've got now a Blink on Boxy, so some further ways to catch and get on top of the back line. I mean, yeah, they, they definitely want to push on for more Liquid. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they're still yet to be able to take the Tier 1 tower down in the mid lane. They'll go for the Tier 2 bottom first. As Nisha very close as well to having the BKB complete, so highly likely that he'll have that out by the time the Aegis has expired. Duracho. He's looking for Insania. Ogre oh, Steel Totem. It will save him. I mean, it's pretty much a four staff. It's another one for them to play against this Slark. Duracho's done a... I, they bought a gem a little bit ago, too. Duracho's done a great job of just being able to play around all this vision and try to push forward and get any type of little snipe places. Oh! <laughs> hey, good jukes with the courier there. Nisha with the micro. A core player not losing his courier? <gasps> Everything to play for here <laughs> in this best of five, you know, game five of this best of five. Super tense moments. Lots of money on the line. $300,000 for the winning team here. Gaming still just playing the greed. Nice, yeah, ace, top spot, you know, somewhere that we've come to, to be you know, very familiar with him seeing, sitting at. Duracho finds a haste. He's now level 20. He's got the Essence Shift talent. Nisha. He can't go for the setup here. The fact that they bought that gem for Duracho, he's always safe. Can't get set up on from some Requiem play. He yeah, does have his BKB now, so an easier time yeah. to, to just be able to frontline commit and get the Requiem off successfully. They want to find something here with their timing. They still want to use this Aegis. They have a minute left on it. They're going to push tier 2 mid. I mean, Boxy's going in deep. Sets up with a bushwhack. A couple of hits. Tofu's gone. Liquid. They can continue the pressure. They'll take out a tier 2 mid. Can they force people back? I, I think they're going to look to keep going, perhaps. I mean, they've still got with the cheese on Mickey. Mm -hmm. Aegis on Nisha here for about one more minute. And he's got his BKB done. So Liquid getting to the point where, despite being overall behind, in, in farm, they, they've got these items that are going to allow them to group up and go for these objectives. They're very strong as a unit around the Thunderlord. Duracho. Boxy gets the catch. They don't have any follow up though. Duracho able to dart pack to pounce away. Jeez. Terrifying stuff. They know that there's a ward up there. Boxy, a good attempt. This blink dagger is enabling him to potentially I mean, get catch. around. Duracho. Duracho. He's going to be able to get in and get the D ward. Next time out for Ace. The Shiva's Guard's complete. Timing for the Aegis, 20 seconds. Gaming, they're gonna look to hit with that. Duracho sees Nisha. He's going straight for him. Nisha Pike. He wants to pout, Tom. Number four, Nisha. He's up to the high ground, back up here. They turn up with Duracho. Duracho popping the Shadow Dance and backing away. Doesn't want to push it anymore. Knows that Liquid's turned up with the full squad. Liquid now are aware of the Silver Edge that's been picked up. It just connected onto Mickey, so they should know that what Quinn has and what Quinn doesn't have. They should know they does not have a BKB on this Templar Assassin after that reveal. Nice. Ace. No catch in Stania. It's a big grab. Any kill matters. Just sort of taking away parts of this this lineup of Liquid that Liquid absolutely need every single hero alive to be able to try and push for something. It's buying time, and this lead for gaming gladiators continues to grow with every minute. Hey, they're scaling and scaling and scaling. We, we oh, and it's 32 minutes, and we haven't we've seen one doom. That is literally it so far. And they're gonna fight this. They're gonna go straight for celery. Deleted. Far from the rest of the team, I mean, Mickey, he's on top of Ace. The backup's Ace. coming in. Quinn watching from the side. Ace able to Ogre Seal turn him down to the low ground. Quinn, he's gonna jump away as well. They drop. Ooh. I mean, Quinn has to be so careful I mean, with the positioning still wants there. To go. He's going to get in onto Boxy. It does get broken. The Requiem about to come out, but it's put to a stop by the silence. Quinn Doom. turns over towards Zai. He's been doomed. He'll force down to the low ground, but Duraccio's got him. As Mickey, he's attempting to chase down Ace. Ace with the BKP and Quinn with the damage. They'll turn towards Mickey. Nisha has to TP out. They've left behind the Bristle. As there's no backup, there's fight. no saving Mickey. As gaming gladiators 
able to sort of dance around the edge of the fight perfectly and leave Liquid no opportunity to find any of these big targets. It's just too much for Liquid to deal with. And a little thing like a silence, an ancient seal or something like that, just to stop a Requiem allows them to just kind of full dominate that fight. They just surround them and toy with them. I mean, the greed, it's paying off massively. I really a 15k lead now. They're huge. And now perhaps Quinn can look to go for that BKB. And they're actually going to just go for a Tormentor. I think so. Yeah, we yep. saw how quickly Quinn did it before. Big money. Easy peasy. And what can Liquid do to slow this down? I mean, w w when you look at Liquid's lineup, d does it get any better when it comes to the high ground defense? Or do gaming gladiators have sufficient ways to just jump in and start the offensive? I mean, Liquid's draft overall wanted to play with a more with a lead, with an actual lead, getting Roshan to be able to push forward into some type of fight. They're just not finding the fights. I mean, g gaming's just toying with them. They're just farming, playing around the map perfectly. Ace, he's gonna have Doom back up in 20 seconds, and I feel like he's just he's just gonna throw it on Zai in most of these fights if Zai's in that position. I think gaming is playing the map just absolutely beautifully versus this more tempo style draft that Liquid's gone for. Nah, it's just gonna be huge amounts of pressure. It's on Nisha to, to, to be able to carry this as an SF, but he's doing it against three incredibly well-scaled cores at this point. I think his, the next timing is really like, they have to make everything happen with the butterfly. Like, that's going to be the last final timing for Liquid, and they have to find some big fight, or this game is just, it looks like it's just going to be completely gamings. Because they're, they're just farming way too much. Everyone's just growing. The scaling from Duraccio is immense. He's got the Scotty, so he's playing versus SF and Bristol. And the Scotty is incredible versus these heroes, as we've seen time and time again. Soon to have a harpoon also. He'll be ready to dive tier twos. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of safe spots on the map right now for Liquid. Doom is just Doom's back up. Level 20 as well. And it's gonna constantly be be up now, be with this 20 talent. Let's see what Duracho can find. He's found Boxy. Box is going down. Oh yeah, they're just they're playing this beautifully. Playing around timings. Playing around just mostly just farming, but it's absolutely working. Nisha, he's got Butterfly. I, this this feels like the final timing for Liquid to try to try to do something here, but they're at such a deficit. It's just not going to be easy for Nisha to sort of stand his ground in the fight no. and, and get these right clicks off. And I mean, look at, at Quinn is actually just omitting BKB completely. He's just going AC, so dealing with the minus armor that the Bristol and the SF can. Bring and they're in. ready to fight down bottom. As in they go, they take out Insania. Nisha will get the Requiem off, but there's no but damage. It's just not there as they'll close straight back in on him, drop the Doom down onto Nisha. Zai is attempting to get out through the Fiend's Gate, but Nisha will not be able to follow. In fact, they, 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 they'll all go through this game in Gladiators. They want to try and chase down Zai as well. They're on Drop four from Duracho, they close the gap. I mean, Mickey and Boxy, what can they do to help him out? They're trying their best, but the Infernal Blade gets slammed down onto Zai. Shiva's gone from Ace, they chased him out. Zai's gone as well. They're winning every fight, they're so far ahead. Hey, look, SF's gonna respawn Doom's back up. So every single one of these fights, he can just pick and choose his targets. Uh, gaming, it, it, it feels like they've just done it. The early game movements, pressing forward, this advantage, just playing the farm game while also just having the better moves. And yeah, with this AC done, they're gonna be able to clean up the base so quickly. Oh yeah. I mean, Quinn, six and one and eight. Ace, four, zero, eight. Duracha only having the one death as well. Playing the map beautifully. Slark is near 25. Boxy. Look at the catch on of the two of them, but Quinn just able to stand his ground, taking out this tier three. And Mickey gets silver edged, has to be careful. This cool build from Quinn. I mean, There's not a lot that he's scared of right now. No. The butterfly reveal did le literally nothing. And yeah, Doom, it's back up. Gaming. Split up, get the lanes pushed out again. Roche, it's going to be a backup in 15 seconds. They can look to just force the issue there. And Liquid, how do they actually fight around there now at this point? Everyone's just too big. Duracho, yeah, level 25. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Regeneration. Our gaming gladiators, they, they can really pick and choose their next move. They sure can. I mean, boots travel too on ace. Now, Liquid. They're going to come out with the smoke. This see if they can somehow catch Gaming Gladiators by surprise. But even if they do... And this could this could catch Quinn off guard if he just walks right into They're heading them. over here, though. Celery? 
He's gonna scout things out. They try and go for him, but he's out with the Glimmer K. The Bushwhack will catch on to Quinn, but jump four from Ace, he's in straight on top of the Tofu and Duracho ready to follow up with the damage and they take Deleted. out Nisha. Out for 80 seconds, no buyback on him. Jump four from Duracho over towards Zai. Quinn as well, dealing out the right clicks. Two dead, Insania, Ogre Steel tomes away, but Duracho's got him. Boxy also to fall, four dead on Liquid. They just lose the support. They <laughs> they get the Doom again. Ace just picking and choosing his battle, and now it's a Roche as well with a Cheese Refresher. Now they can just Doom two targets. This is such a clean game from gaming. What do you do? How do you hit anybody? Quinn, I mean, I mean you, you, you don't. You don't? I mean, Nisha, he, he's got decent farm, but we're seeing in these fights, he's just completely dealt with. There's just they're too just... many items on Gaming Gladiators right now. They're too far ahead. And they're dancing. They're literally just dancing around this Bristleback. Mika can't hit targets. But he's a chasing. He's like, okay, I'm going to get Tofu, but then that's just about it. Everybody else dies in the meantime. And bottom. And back in action. They're finding Mickey. They find him. Boots of travel too. They don't even need the Doom anymore. Yeah, no buyback on him. He's 800 gold short. Duracho has 40 stacks or 39 stacks. On to high ground. Quinn now, level 25, refraction charges. They couldn't even go through those first ones. I mean, all three cores are unkillable. They and really the are. Supports, they're not easy to catch as well. Between sort of the four stars plays and, and such, they're out of there. Derecho, he's ready to start diving in. Takes him out here beyond the tier fours. It's senya has gone. They'll catch him in the Requiem. Can they Coming even kill the him? Back, but he's able to get the Shadow Dance off. They can't even kill He can him. look to reset, jumps out of the side. Boxy tries to get some sort of setup, but it's not going to happen. Duraccio's out of there. Quinn, he's focused on the objectives. Cleaning up this top set of racks. Liquid, they've got to try and hold, but it's four versus five. As Gaming Gladiators, they're collapsing onto Zai. Zai getting shredded by the physical Another damage of Quinn. They take out Zai. No buyback on him. Nietzsche's just gone. All three cores out without buyback. Duraccio's diving the base. He wants more. He's looking for the team wipe. Boxy goes Scepter. Duracho has the two. Boxy trying the best with the outplay. <laughs> it will be able to sort of tra trap into the trees. Boxy. He <laughs> He's being slippery. <laughs> He's making them work for it. He's like, you're not killing me. You're going to end the game. I'm not dying. They'll go for the tier fours. They'll look to close this up. They can taste the victory here now. Gaming Gladiators on to the Ancient. It's game over. GG, it's called. Ladies and gentlemen, Gaming Gladiators take this game five.